So the first step in creating a map is to actually create a rough kind of uh, a rough um, outline or rough layout of your um, actual map that you want to create. So here I've got I've got some buildings, I've got a, a, a wall with a road and some pavements and a, and a and a bridge. Okay, so I'm laying out the scene that I want to create uh, that I want to actually create my map for. Now, this is important in terms of A, identifying uh, uh, the assets that we want, B, giving me the layout as well, and also C, planning out my camera move, because the camera move, the, 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 where I'm actually uh, capturing this scene from, as you can imagine we're using this projection technique, the angle that I'm capturing this scene from, or going to render this scene out from, is really going to dictate my whole approach to creating uh, uh, to creating this mat. Okay, so I, what I need to do is plan out. Not only do I need the layout, but I need to plan out my camera move. So here you can see I've animated uh, a, a sort of a push, okay, uh, or a dolly forward, okay, with my camera here. So I've animated that. That's great. Now what I want to do is, um, yeah, so I've animated this dolly forward. Uh, now what I want to do is, with this camera, this is the camera that I'm going to render out, what I want to do is make sure that I'm thinking, what I want to do is think about the final production settings or the, the final resolution that I'm going to uh, produce this video in, okay, or this shot in, okay? Um, and then what I want to do is put those settings into here. OK, and um, the key thing is what we need. So I'm going to shoot this. So basically, I want to render this out in HD and that's the final shots going to be in HD. And the, the key reason for putting these in at this stage is that allows me when I switch on this resolution gate. So I'll just show you how to switch that on. So with, when you're looking through the camera, you're going to render render from. OK, uh, you want to go and select camera tools. If I just switch the gate off, OK, you can see that it's removed that gate. And if I switch it back on here, camera settings, resolution gate, and you can see what it actually does for us is it allows us to kind of see what's going to be in the camera and what's not going to be in the camera. And that's going to be really important for our camera projection. OK, so now that we've done that, um, uh, the other thing that we need to do in order to make this accurate, we need to think about if we're going to actually, if we're going to shoot any other elements, any other visual elements to be included in this scene, um, what we need to do is make sure that the field of view that we're going to be shooting this scene from matches, okay, uh, the field of view that we're going to produce any other video elements from. So what you want to do is you want to go into camera settings, so select camera. So if I was going to shoot, let's say I wanted to shoot some people, and there were going to be some people in this shot as well, okay? Um, um, what I would want to do, um, let me just demonstrate here. So if I was going to shoot some people, what I want to do is um, go into the camera settings and set up our angle of view. And basically, the angle of view is set up, is based on the... Um, focal length of the lens that you're using, so this setting here, and then it's it's these two settings here. You can either put them in inches or millimeters, that's fine, okay? But it's the uh, camera aperture here, which is basically the size of the sensor of the camera that you're going to be using, okay? So just to recap, you want this, if, if you're going to shoot any other video elements to go into this scene, you want this the 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 the, the settings, the camera aperture or sensor size, and uh, focal length to match the camera you're going to use to shoot those elements. Okay, the other thing that we need to think about is the field of view that we're going to actually um, uh, that we're actually going to use for our projection system. Okay, so what what's the field of view of the camera that we're going to use to project our scene? So in here, if I go into um, panels. Uh, perspective you'll see I've got a camera here called camera projector and this camera is the camera that I'm going to use to project from now let me just demonstrate here if I just go into perspective you can see here's the camera so the moving camera that you see if I move the timeline the camera that's moving is the camera that's got that dolly forward in and that's the camera that we're actually going to render our scene out with okay this camera here this is the camera we're going to use to project the scene OK, so obviously we can't really project the scene from a moving camera. I mean, that might create an interesting result, but it's not not what we want here. OK, so we're going to project from here. OK. 
So when thinking about the field of view of this this camera, what we want to do is think about um, uh, you know what uh, what camera am I going to be using to photograph the images for my mat? Okay. So in this case, I'm going to be using um, uh, sorry, I'm going to be using a um, Canon camera, so I've, I've got a 550D, but basically it's a Canon camera with an APS-C size sensor, and I'm using a 35mm lens. So I've put in 35mm, okay, and then what I've done is I've put in the uh, size of the camera sensor here as well, okay. So I'm that's what I've set up as my projection one in order to match the camera that I'm using to shoot all the photographs that I'm using for my, for my mat, so that things fit together better, okay. So that's that's um, that's setting up the cameras. All I've done here is basically once I've animated this camera, all I did was actually simply duplicate this camera. Uh, yeah, all I did was duplicate this camera and um, uh, 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 and then remove the animation from it. Okay, but actually a, a key thing you want to decide from when you're setting up your projection camera, a key thing you want to decide on. So if I just go back to my camera that I'm going to shoot from that's camera one okay with the with the movement on it a key decision that we need to make is where we're going to project from what, what's the be best position to project from so what you want to do is kind of consider what is your hero shot so if you're going to be you know is it the opening part of the the mat or is it the closing part of the mat is it rotating what what is the main frame that you are going to be at that, that, that is that is what is the most important frame of this particular shot so the hero frame, rather. Uh, uh, yeah. Then what you want to do is, once you've decided that, you want to kind of work out what's the best position to project from for that particular frame. So in this case, what I've done is, because I'm doing a push forward, I've kind of gone for a kind of logical sort of solution here. If I project from uh, where the camera is furthest out from our scene, or furthest away from these elements, if I project from there, that will cover all the elements that are going to be in the rest of this scene. Because obviously as I push in, all I'm doing is, is moving the camera further into these elements here. So the elements just get larger, okay? There's nothing new coming into my scene. So if I project from here, it will cover the whole scene for the rest of this camera move. So with that logic in mind, I basically duplicated this camera, removed all the animation from it, uh, and, and left it at where it was at frame one uh, and then obviously just renamed it camera projector because it's being used for projection. Once you've set all these cameras up, uh, a good tip is to lock the cameras down because what you don't want to be doing is moving the projector, the, moving the projection um, uh, or um, moving the camera that you're shooting from uh, after your um, uh, shot and especially what you don't want to do is move the projection camera that's the bit that's really going to cause you a problem okay so um, also if you actually um, if you're if the camera you're using to project from is different to the um, uh, to the aspect ratio you're going to render at it is also worth just checking that 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 camera is going to cover the entire scene. Okay, that's that's probably another key thing to do as well. Um, uh, yeah, uh, what you could do with that is is just check the film gate. So, for example, if I go to camera camera projector now, and if I go into um, my uh, my camera settings, what I'm doing here is this this shows me the resolution gate. OK, the film gate shows me actually what my camera is capable of capturing. And you'll see here that that's where the APS-C size sensor kind of kicks in. OK, but actually the way that that's working is, is fine. That's, that's exactly what I need. OK, but you can see this is the way the kind of APS-C size sensor is kind of kicking in here. OK. OK, so now that we're happy with the... Um, uh, with the uh, map that we've uh, with the camera positions and the uh, the position of the camera and the position of the projector what we want to do is lock the camera position so to lock them you just want to go into your channel box uh, select the camera so view select camera that's going to select the camera that we're we're looking through at the moment and then just simply select all the translate and rotate options and simply right click and go 
lock. And it's worth doing this for both the camera that we're shooting from and the camera that we're using as a projector. Okay, so now we're in a position where we're ready to actually start rendering out our wireframe.